And now for something completely different. <laughs> Let's take a break from the PCP stuff and replicas and look at something more unusual and less mainstream, so to speak, but by no means less interesting. I'm quite looking forward to this one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today it's the turn of a target focus pistol. It's the Zoraki HP-01 from Atta... <laughs> I can't say it. Attacker, Ar Atta Attacker Arms. No. Attack Arms. From Attacker Arms. I've done it again. From Attack Arms. I think that's how you say it. And from the first time of firing this... Me, I've named it the Zokraki because this has such a satisfyingly sharp crack to it. As always, let's take a walk around first, shall we? The stats. This is 31.3 centimetres long and tops the scales at 1.1 kilograms. It is all black apart from the seemingly out of place bright silver coloured two stage adjustable trigger and auto safety. It has the very typical shape of a target-style pistol to it and supports a very ergonomically shaped grip, which is, in this version, very much right-handed. And this really does fit my hands beautifully, from the thumb cutaway to the palm rest and even the finger shapes at the front of the grip. The palm rest is adjustable if you have broader hands. Working our way up this time, the trigger does have that seemingly out of place bright finish to it, but has a multitude of adjustments to it, including up, down, turning left or right, forwards and backwards, and of course, pull weight. This one was set at 1.3 pounds straight out of the box and was very easy to use and get used to. In front of the trigger is an automatic safety that not only locks the trigger, but also blocks it too. This can very easily be pushed forward with your trigger finger to drop into fire mode. Incidentally, all the tools required to make these adjustments are in the rather nice heavy-duty shaped foam-filled box that is also supplied with a small bottle of oil, something I always like to see, a test paper to show that this has gone through a quality control and pre-delivery check, something that is often lacking in some very much more expensive guns supplied by the high-end companies. An interesting point here to note is that this is a Turkish company, apparently, but the quality control check had been completed by a German company in Germany. They claim this was firing 177 metres per second, so we'll put that to the test later. It also has a picture of the target results, and naturally we'll check that as well. For a target gun, I would naturally expect to see the open sights fitted, which indeed this does have, and they are adjustable. The rears are adjustable for elevation and windage, and the front has a choice of post sights. To make the choice, simply turn the post forwards or backwards, using your thumb, thumbnail, or whatever else you've got around. It's quite a nice idea. That said, about the open sights, this does appear to have a bit of a weaver rail on the top and a Picatinny rail on the bottom. One can only assume for alternative sighting choices. I wouldn't have thought these would be allowed in competition, but this does open the options and choices, I suppose, for people looking to use this pistol. And surely that simply opens up the market for them to more potential buyers. Time to talk about the power of this pistol now, I suppose, because this is a pump pneumatic, which means there is a choice on power levels. The more you pump, the more power this will kick out. 
This usually works, but of course up to a point. Certainly here in the UK, because of our six foot pound maximum laws. The action is started by firstly releasing the top of the gun by lifting the two locks on the top rear and you will need to lift both of them together to get this to pull open. Once open pull it all the way forward and then with fingers out of the way with the palm of your hand push it all the way back home. Then repeat up to three times. The more pumps, the more power. It should be noted that you need to drop in your pellet before closing it up for the last time. This is done directly into the back of the barrel. Incidentally, you can pump this as often as you like, but once it is up to its maximum power levels, the excess air pressure is released and is not usable. Oof. Looking on the bright side, it will give you that workout you keep promising to take if you choose to keep pumping it. Once pumped up and the pallet is on board, you're ready to go. Simply release the safety and fire away. So, let's take a look at the power level, shall we? Because after one pump, this was showing 377 feet per second, which is 2.66 foot-pounds or 3.61 joules. After two pumps, it was showing 503 feet per second, which is 4.74 foot-pounds or 6.43 joules. After three pumps, it was showing 558 feet per second, which is a legal limit kissing 5.84 foot-pounds or 7.91 joules. Yes, I did try it with more pumps, but the valve did release the excess pressure, so no more power, I'm afraid. So converting that to metres per second to check that pre-delivery document equates to 170 metres per second. So yes, with a lighter pellet it will achieve that claimed figure. Pretty comfortably, I would have thought. I was using JSB 177 8.44 grain pellets to obtain these results. This is also available in 2.2 calibre, incidentally. I feel I should point out, because someone is bound to ask, can it be used for vermin control? Well, my opinion is no. It really isn't suitable. And I feel that for vermin control, you really need a higher power rifle. Apart from the power thing, a rifle is always more stable to ensure a cleaner shot. Well, power test done. What about target work? Time to put this in the indoor range out at 10 metres using standard dome pellets. No fancy flatheads or the like. Here goes. Hmm, what about putting this in Mrs. AAR hands and see how she does then? She's gone. 
Well, to be honest, apart from a couple of wayward shots, I would say she was just about as tight a group as I was. She's pretty much a natural. Just need to get her to get her breathing right and get her to take her time. She never fails to amaze me, really, for a non-shooter. What do we think, then? It has a retail price of about £270 UK, and if you compare that to some of the higher-end CO2 replica pistols, then I really think this represents good value. Now, the CO2 replicas are terrific fun to shoot and own, but sometimes you actually want to take the target work a little more seriously. And, for similar money, you could have one of these. Add it to your collection. Not a bad idea. Considering that the power levels can be changed, and this could be suitable for smaller distances, or places you don't want to risk any damage. And since we've experienced lockdown, this may become more important at some point in the future. Who knows? It has been great fun and very rewarding and I defy anyone to not have some fun with this and maybe fun with a slightly serious edge to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's look at something a little different. If so, please give us the all-important thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that alarm bell and if you haven't done so yet, check out the website at aaronair. Dot com and why not follow us on Facebook to find out in advance what's due out on Fridays. Thanks again for watching, stay safe and shoot safe and we'll see you next week.